Welcome to Good Shepherd Lutheran here in Lincoln, Nebraska. As always, I'm Vicar Steele, and it's wonderful to have you with us today. For our devotion, we will be listening to the words of 1 Peter chapter 4. Let's hear what God's word has to say for us today. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The end is at hand. The end is near. Doomsday approaches. You've heard him. You've heard all sorts of people say, the end is nigh, repent, standing on the street corners with sign, doomsday is near, the apocalypse is coming. And quite often we scratch our heads and we laugh and mock them. And it's true, some of them might not be all there, might not be all put together. And it's foolish to try and predict the exact time, for Jesus himself says, no one knows the day or the hour, but only the Father. And yet, and yet, the statement itself at the beginning is true. The end of all things is at hand. It's been over 2,000 years, Jesus. When's the end? Come on, Jesus, when's the end? If it's not going to come now, I, uh, I have some business to attend to. I have a party to go to. I have uh, other things to do. Beloved, do not be deceived. The end is at hand. For just as at the proper time God sent his son Jesus to live, to die, and to rise again for your forgiveness and justification, so too at the proper time will the last day arrive. But what does St. Peter encourage us in the Bible? Be sober-minded and self-controlled. Keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. That's the first part of our reading today. So what does it sound like? It sounds like the life of baptism, dear friends. Be sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Be self-controlled. Self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. Repent of your sins and live in the forgiveness of your sins won for you by Christ. Live in the gospel. Love God and serve your neighbor. Serve each other in the church. Everybody has a gift. Everybody has a place. As good stewards of God's very grace, whoever speaks as one who speaks oracle of God, your pastors, your trained, your called, your ordained ministers of the word, they speak as one who speaks oracles of God. That is their job. That is their vocation. As one who serves, whoever serves, serves by the strength that God supplies. Whatever else you may do in the church, greeting, being on a committee, helping out with the food, helping out with Sunday school, 
You serve by the strength that God gives you, so that in all things the church may work together in harmony for the glory of God in the building up of the church and the expansion of his kingdom. Truly to him be glory, honor, and dominion, as St. Peter says. So the end of all things is near. Live out your baptism. Serve one another in love. Come to church. Receive God's gifts. But St. Peter does not stop there. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. For if you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed. St. Peter, he listened to Jesus. He was a bit of a thick-headed numbskull, but he listened to Jesus, and the Holy Spirit reminded him of everything Jesus taught. And now he repeats it here in his epistle to you. Do not be surprised when fiery trial comes upon you. If you are Christ's, if you have been baptized into his death and resurrection, you too shall share in his sufferings. You too will bear a cross. Christ underwent many fiery trials. He was despised, mocked, rejected by men, scourged, bled, crucified for you, that your sins might be forgiven. And as one who has been marked, who has been signed by the Holy Cross, as one redeemed by Christ and Him crucified, you too shall share in Christ's sufferings. But do not weep, but rejoice. Rejoice when you have been counted worthy to suffer for Christ's name. And that can look like a lot of things. We know of our brothers and sisters around the world who give their life, who shed their blood for the gospel. Glorious and blessed martyrs they are. But here at home, what persecution do you suffer? Are you mocked for the name of Christ? Christ was mocked. Are you scorned and rejected because you are a Christian? Christ was scorned and rejected by his own. He came among his own, and his own did not know him. Have you lost friends, family, job? Have you lost anything for the name of Jesus? Beloved, Jesus laid down his life for you. He gave everything so that you might have everything, so that you might have life. In all your fiery trials, you are not alone, for you follow in the footsteps of your Savior, Jesus, who has already suffered on your behalf. And where he has gone, you too shall go. Yes, you shall suffer in one way or another for the sake of Christ, whether it be persecutions, fiery trials, intense temptations. But Christ has gone through suffering and death for your sake, and he is risen from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God, at the right hand of God the Father, and he shall come and call you out of your grave on the last day and say, Rise, rise to everlasting life, my beloved. He has suffered, and he is now glorified. And even as you suffer, you are blessed for sharing in his suffering. For after suffering shall come glory. After suffering shall come comfort. After death shall come everlasting life. Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, dear children of the Heavenly Father, the end of all things is at hand. Keep on loving one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Love one another as Christ has loved you. God has loved you. Love God in return. And when you suffer, know that you are blessed. Know that you have upon you the spirit of glory and the spirit of God. The Lord be with you always, and he is with you, even unto the end of the age. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Christian Church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To, ra to, to raise those who fall, and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good to give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage, and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayer. We 
Jesus Christ, Son of God. We implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. takes away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, according to our sins. Do not reward us according to our iniquities. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you desire not the death of a sinner, but rather that we should turn from our evil ways and live. Graciously spare us those punishments which we by our sins have deserved, and grant us always to serve you in holiness and pureness of living. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs>